Welcome to our Maximum Growth, The Conversation. So we have a focus tonight on COVID and the changing world. So I've had quite a lot of, of clients come to me, also just general conversations, people ringing me up or sending me messages going, Tanya, I'm really, I've got heightened emotions around what's happening in the world. And it seems to be, it seems to have somehow amplified just recently again. And so it just say, seemed to make sense to have and come together to have um, a conversation about what's actually going on for you and what is happening. And I'm just letting you know as a, a prelim to that as well is it's also because I'd love to um, invite you to join a workshop where we actually go through and dissolve your emotions so you can get back on path and present and purpose with what's most important to you. And then, and so part of that is, you know, sometimes we just have to get off our chest what it is that we're really challenged by. And also um, um, hear other people's point of view and, and uh, experience of what's going on. Then I can't help because it's ingrained in every cell of my body, but I cannot help but filter this experience through universal principles, through human behavior, human dynamics, that that's just going to be part of what we're going to do inside of the conversation that we have today. So I want you to imagine it to be like Plato and Aristotle meeting. So We'll have people in this group because every group dynamic has it. We have people who are pro-lockdown, anti-lockdown, people who are pro-vaccination, anti-vaccination. We have people who also don't really care either way and they're just here to be a fly on the wall. So we, we have people from all sides of the spectrum. And so it's, it's important to um, understand that that's also part of the dynamic of a group dynamic and also the world dynamic we'll get to know. And so... You know, when when Plato and, and Aristotle have conversations about life and the world and you know ethics or whatever it is, they would kind of argue their point of view, and then the other one would argue their opposite point of view, and then sway the other one to the other side, and then then they'd go back to the other side um, it, when you show more of the benefits to the one side, and it would just be this kind of continual you know swapping between. Um, the two sides and showing well what's the benefit of one side and they go oh yeah actually that's really interesting and then they show the drawbacks of the other side and it's like it's kind of this really you know kind of like interesting dynamic um, and conversation because at the end of the day in order to become more aware you have to become you have to be able to appreciate both sides or see both sides of a dynamic in order to um, in order to evolve and so we're going to have an opportunity to do that. So how this conversation is going to work is if you want to, and you don't have to say anything if you don't want to, but you have an opportunity for two minutes to share your point of view of what's going on in your life and what you perceive in the, in the, in the changing world. I'm then going to have a conversation with you afterwards and kind of talk about um, how you, how you perceive the world from potentially from a different perspective. So I'll be like, I'll be your like Plato to your Aristotle, you know, kind of done dynamic for you. And so we're going to do that for with each individual who wants to put up their hand. Now you can do it two ways. One, you can private or oh, three ways. One, you can unmute yourself and put your hand up and go for it and speak. Two, you can message and put it in the chat section if you don't want to speak and that's fine. I could just read out what you say. And then if you're like three and you're like, oh, I, don't, I, I, I would love to be more courageous and, but I just feel like I would rather say it privately to you in the chat. You can also do that as well. And I'll, I'll also read it out. So one is I would love um, an opportunity to just frame that, understand that not everyone has the same perspective as you. And so if someone has a different perspective that you disagree with, this isn't about proving someone's right and someone else is wrong. This is just about appreciating that there's, there's, a, there's a group dynamic and there'll be pros and cons, people for and against in this group. And we're going to get an opportunity um, to hear both sides. So what we'll do is we'll go until about 10 minutes to, and then once uh, we do, we'll do a wrap up and I'll also share the event that we're doing um, at the, um, in a couple of weeks time. All right. So who is going to be the brave cookie to start us off? Lottie, go for it. So tell me, um, tell me your perspective, because we've had COVID you know, um, and, you know, the, the lockdown and the changes for, you know, going on since well, March last year. So we're about 18 months into it. So tell me, tell me, we've got a couple of minutes. 
tell hi me everyone. Hi everyone, I'm Lodi. Uh, my biggest charge is the forced vaccinations. Mm -hmm. um, it's pissing me off like you wouldn't believe. I've tried everything in my power to balance it out. Um, but to have someone forcing something upon you um, when I think it's it's my body, it's my right, and it just makes me so angry. I've never been so angry as, and, as, as I am right now. And who do you, just out of curiosity, who do you perceive to be forcing you to do it? The government, all this bullshit, this mandated stuff, you know, towards the construction industry, You no jab, no work. Like, I mean, my attitude is... Can I swear? Is that all right? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Apologise. I speak French really well. <laughs> it fucking pisses me off. Like, who the fuck are these people to say you can't go to work and you can't do this um, unless you have this thing in your body that you don't want to have? Mm. So that's that's me. Okay. And so tell me, I um, your values are challenged right now. So do you work in the constru construction industry or your no, hobby? I've there? got family, a lot of my family. Yep. Um, and one of my highest values is health and well-being. Okay. And so so because pissed off means when we get pissed off about something, it has mm -hmm. sometimes it can be really entangled with this. I um, our values are, are being severely challenged. Mm. You have perhaps family as a higher value, you have health and well-being as a high value, and therefore your family's being challenged. So you you're 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 feeling that as well. Yep. And then also your number one value of going, well, I choose to put what I put in my body and then you feel like you, you, mm. have, you have no choice. So, yes, of course, a byproduct of values being challenged is being pissed off. It's the best feedback mechanism to let you know that you've got some challenge going on and value challenge going on. So awesome. thank you for sharing. Thanks, Tanya. Okay. All right. Christian. Yeah, thanks, Tanya. I'm on the same page as Laudy. Um, I feel like I haven't thought this through, but I can talk from a perspective that not many people can in that I was in the military. I had eight vaccines in one day. I had vaccine damage um, 30 years ago. I knew about this. Uh, it's not something that just came up in COVID. Uh, it fucked up my life. I have uh, several chronic autoimmune illnesses from it. Uh, I would say to anyone, be terrified of getting a vaccine. Be absolutely terrified. You can't undo it. Um, and this is a one-sided conversation. There's a dominant narrative, which is COVID, lockdowns, forced vaccines, passports, all of this. Um, you know, Laudi and I are not trying to force people not to have vaccines, but they're trying to force us. So it's completely one-sided. You won't change my opinion. I've read hundreds and hundreds of articles, thousands of pages. Um, I'm not gonna to listen to some paid apparatchik of the state uh, who's highly paid, who's desperate to hang on to their job and get the superannuation or who's invested in, the, in big pharma or whatever. Uh, I, I'm, I'm gonna to listen to veterans who've, who've had anthrax vaccines and, and vet, you know prisoners who've been uh, had the health damaged or minorities or whatever. So yeah, I, I don't know how you're going to help me out of this. I'm, I'm going to come along to that workshop, but Daniel, you've got you've got your work cut out. My, my my only question to you, Christian, is: Would you love to see a deeper, more profound meaning to your life and your experiences than what you're? than what you're currently seeing because I wonder how much you know some of your health issues have been because of the emotional challenge that you perceive that this has done to you in your like if you what happens if you could resolve the emotion how much that might be able to also heal your body too yeah no doubt and I, you know as, as you know you know me very well I've worked with you a lot and you've helped turn my life around and I'm incredibly grateful for that and to John um yeah, but I mean, it took me till three years ago to, to find De Martini's work and that's helped me switch it around. But, you know, as a, as a young pilot in the Air Force, I, I knew nothing of that. And then mm. I, couldn't, you know, I couldn't heal myself. And, and then I, had, I lost everything, you know, job, life, s social life, health, everything, well-being. So I feel like I know it from the inside. 
Mm. I, I just feel like I know it from the inside and I, I haven't had a vaccine in 30 years. Um, I, you couldn't pay me enough to, to yeah. have one of those COVID vaccines. So yeah, I, I know on the emotional side, but geopolitically and, and, and medically, I don't feel I could change my opinion unless someone comes along and says, okay, Christian, here, I've got some more accurate information and better knowledge. And then I'd say, great, I'll move. Okay. And so what happens if, what happens if shift, because sometimes when we have a rigidity with our opinion and we're perceiving it to be black and white, yeah. that's when our body doesn't become as adaptable. So what happens if it isn't making the vaccines right and good? It was just making the experience of what you've gone through, which is like the challenge with not working and changing, you know, your career and doing all that. What happens if you saw, um, blessings in that experience, would that then change your your view and you actually genuinely go, you know what? I was really grateful for my whole life changing because I didn't want that life anyway. And then maybe yeah. you'd be more grateful for the vaccine as opposed to being resentful of it. So just maybe something to ponder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, just to finish, I, I would love to get rid of a little bit more of the anger that I feel as well. And, and maybe, you know, be able to sort of look at it and say, Hey, you guys, you know, I hope you're in, going to enjoy the growth opportunities, personal growth opportunities. Mm -hmm chronic ill health or miscarriages you know good luck with that you you'll learn a lot okay well thank you thank you christian <laughs> thanks thanks Tanya. i'm so you know, glad you put this on it's it's i'm really glad and i'm sorry if i'm a little bit overcharged that's okay we are um it's it's what we're here for thanks. so we're here okay. To, to see okay so we've got that has asked a question which is can you speak about how to manage people who have strong views but um you tell them you have a different view and it is um it's best to talk about something different more than um more neutral however they won't um drop the subject um it's like they are obsessed with making you believe what they believe i just don't care um enough about what they talk about and I have other things to focus on okay so the the um we can sometimes get swept up in other people's stuff you know like you know it's other people's we were talking about with um Tony we're talking about other people's agenda in a conversation we we're having just recently um and we can kind of get caught up in other people's even other people's inspiration when someone else is so inspired by what they do we can kind of get caught up in that and we're like hang on what doing this is what I want to be doing and so other people do definitely have an influence sometimes on us and so one thing is that um, we don't see the world as it is we see the world as as you are and so if we're noticing that gosh they have such a strong viewpoint on something and they're just you know trying to really make me believe something that I don't want to believe in you have to start to question well hang on where are you doing exactly the same thing with someone else like um, I know some people, I don't know if this works for you guys, but some people in the personal development industry, you know, and world can can put and put that down people's throats to believe in and um, maybe in universal principles or finding the blessings in things. And they can put it down people's, um, you know, throats and trying to make them believe it as well. And so we don't we don't see the world as it is. We see the world as as you are. And so if we can take that into account, then you can go, oh, thank you. You're actually just reflecting something I have yet to love in myself. And then you take ownership of that. You then get back, back on track doing what you love to do. And then the, the outside world just becomes noise. And so, because you're really focused on your, your own inner, inner vision and mission. So maybe that will help Evette with yours. All right. So. Tanya. Alan. Hi. <laughs> For those who've been in maximum growth um, community would know Alan has has some viewpoints, but please, I'd love to hear again. Yeah, I mean to to put it short, I think my challenge, while it is multifaceted, is but I think it's about um, that suddenly our human rights are denied to us, and we become the enemy simply because we do not want to take part in an experiment, and that to me is completely unethical. And when you then also put into consideration that this whole thing, in my opinion, is a, is a scam which is perpetuated through a useless PCR test that has been abused um, and used the wrong way, um, all in order to get this so-called great reset through, which has been in the making, like once you start going down the rabbit hole and realize how long this whole thing has been in the making, it gets bloody scary, I think. And just, yeah, it's just, 
you know, for me, it, it has a huge impact on, on me. I, I spent, similar to Christian, I spent a, a lot of time um, on this whole topic. I learned a lot, but then again, um, you know, <laughs> I like to have other things to do. It does, it somehow does affect my health. And for me, it's also, and um, the people from the community know, I have my family in Germany and I, I have no clue whether I will ever see them again because I'm not going to be a guinea pig for this vaccine. So um, there's high emotions. And um, my challenge is because I'm so one-sided with this. Um, and as you know, when I when I want to do the work, I'm just like, I'm so blinded. I just, I just can't. So I'm, I'm wondering then, Ellen, like how much, when you, when you say you're one-sided, I wonder how much research have you done on the other side? Because because sometimes what can happen is inflammation can um, create inside of our body because we only we're selectively choosing what we read, where we get our information from, how much you know who how our sources are, and they're one sided sources who have biased opinions anyway. And so when we're reading that, we then go oh, you know we get more inflamed, uh, but we're actually not researching both sides of the of the of the debate so I'm wondering how much you you know you don't have to necessarily share or not but just maybe something to think about it's that you know reading both sides and then making a decision can also be helpful I've, I've certainly you know listened to both sides probably not as much to the ones that you know I mean I'm, I'm not watching mainstream media necessarily but the things that come across are just like I don't even want to hear it um, and I've Sometimes, because um, I'm just blocked on Facebook for for 30 days because I actually posted the <laughs> I posted the very quote from Carrie um, Mullis, the the PCR inventor, that you can test for everything if you just run it often enough. Um, Facebook blocked me for that for 30 days this time. <laughs> and um, and so if you look at if you if if you then actually check and sometimes I do go on the fact checker pages just to see what those people are saying. Yeah, and you can just say how brainwashed this is, and it just it pisses me off even more. Um, but it's not that I'm not looking at it, but it's like the agenda is there. So, but yeah, anyway. Okay, that's Thank my you. part. Thank you. Right. Um, I see your hand up, Tony. Just me one second. I have um, oh, um, um, Hamish. Where is Hamish? You said you're happy to stick your hand up. Are you, do you want me to read yours or would you like to um, speak it and share it? I can't see you where you are. I will share it. Share it. So um, my interest lays around the work of the World, World Economic Forum and specifically the Great Reset. For me, the challenge lays in shifting the fact from um, um, what is, what, I don't even, the facts. However, um, I am of the viewpoint that regardless of being either by design or default, the COVID has created an opportunity for a reset to happen. So hands up if you really feel like there's been a reset in the last 18 months of life and your, your own life. Do you feel like there's been a reset or not? Yeah, so many people. Okay, so for me, everyone else is busy debating each other like seagulls on chimps. <laughs> um, why? While um, those who have the power to drive change, no doubt, will be busy getting on with it. So the great reset is true, but what's the benefit and drawback? And that's where I'm at. So yeah, definitely there is a there is a, a, a definitely a reset because what happens is in in times of change. We, it ultimately creates a value shift. And with a value shift means that we have different things that are, are shifting in our priority. So I, I know a lot of people who maybe didn't have family as a very high value that definitely shifted from March onwards, that family became a lot closer than it had been before. So it's kind of then interesting that the whole um, perception around forced vaccinations is dividing families now because we had this like, you know, connection for a period of time. And now we've got somewhat so some families that have a separation between who's like saying um, pro and anti uh, vaccination. So there's been a divide there. So there's definitely been a reset in some people's um, values. It's also been a reset in, in um, how we do business as well, because there's definitely been some changes because who, 
wasn't online prior to COVID and now is online than where they were before. So who's who's kind of had a business that they've shifted that way. So I know, yeah, Yvonne's saying, yes, like there's been like lots of people who've kind of adapted because we've had technology around for what, like 1990, we had, is that when the internet came out? 1996, I remember in, in a high school that, you know, the internet came out, but it's been years since people actually started integrating it. And there was many businesses in 2020 that still didn't have the internet. So um, as a part, like, or, you know, um, were online and had an online presence, like they had um, prior to 2000 and um, like 19, they didn't have much. And that's really shifted. So a great reset, well, maybe that's part of the reset is using technology has been um, in terms of changing things. So it depends on which, I think that's what Hamish was kind of alluding to as well, that like there's benefits and drawbacks to both sides. Um, of the reset and so it's also going well which perspective do you want to to, um, to appreciate it on um, in terms of things being reset and Hamish said I'm, I'm specifically referring to the um, World Economic Forum and the proposals that if correct um, how this will pan out sorry I don't really so um do 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 so tell me so someone explained to me the great reset you will own nothing and be happy. So that's the great reset. So someone's selling you an idea that they are going to, that you'll you'll own nothing, no land, no, you, no nothing. And like everyone, is this everyone or just, just, just like everyone? Uh, <clears throat> Tanya, mm. I, I can have a stab at it. <clears throat> I mean, it's a very general thing. It's um, involves social, total social control and surveillance uh central bank digital digital currencies where fiat uh cash is taken out of the system and they know exactly what you spend everywhere they can cut off your okay. funds etc cetera, etc cetera. it's much wider than i appreciate yeah. that how how is that any different to what they already know prior to this so i just i'm um, if you came to me and said you know that there's um no reset i'll be like well i'll be showing the i'm, the, I'm like the, showing you the other side um, so how do, how do we, you have to start asking the question, okay, so if that's true, if I really truly believe that there's going to be this total reset where we're going to have, um, you know, uh, they're going to know everything that we spend, how, don't they already know that anyway? Because we've had ATMs and we've had phones for years before this and we've had banks for a long time before this. So how, how, so it's like, well, okay, so does that really, is it really, really true? And if it's that you will own nothing, so how could someone take away the things that you own? What, so they take away what your house and your car and like, how would, how would that happen? Like how, tell me how it would happen. Cause you, then you go, oh, hang on, let me see the other side. So it's like, the, it's, you start to question, it's then question everything. Like no matter what it is, question everything. Cause then the questioning actually leads you to go, oh, well, maybe that's the other side. And you get to you get to kind of get your curiosity in instead of having bias around, you know, you know, um, inflaming what you already perceive. It's just being able to um, be flexible to be able to appreciate that there, there is another side. And it's about opening up to that other side as well. So, um, Tony. Yeah, hi, Tony. Yeah, I, I mean, I can totally understand the speakers uh, that have spoken so far. Uh, and for myself, as an example, last weekend, my daughter, she's traveling to the US to, to go to university. So she had to get a vaccination in order that she could attend that university. And uh, I didn't really want her to get the vaccination. Um, but obviously she wanted to go to university, so there wasn't much choice about it. Um, but from my own perspective, I just decided not to get emotional uh, with her about it or like this is a terrible thing, etc. because I do think that if she can stay um, calm and reasoned, then th there's less chance of any adverse uh, reactions. So, so that's the way that I dealt with that. I was in, we were in a coffee shop with a, a friend and uh, he started going on about he knew that I wasn't really, I wasn't keen on vaccinations. And so he was like saying about what a great thing it was and stuff. So I could feel a charge rise inside of me, but I decided not to say anything because my, my daughter was there. So as, as we're saying, there's these conversations going on all, all over the place. Um, mm. 
and we're getting charged. But I think what I'm saying to myself is that um, uh, it's still possible to take action if you're not charged. So if I reduce my charge, it doesn't mean to say that I'm going to become like a, a pussy and I'm just going to let the government r ride rough, roughshod over me. I can still take action. People can still take action uh, if they're not in a massively emotional state. In some ways, we, we take better action when we're in a balanced state. So I think sometimes people do think that it means you're not going to do anything. I don't think it means that at all. Mm. And then the last thing I was I was going to say was just that, you know, because you mentioned about our conversation and how I, I was kind of becoming more aware of these global agendas, which was quite a wake up call for me. Um, but personally, and this might be controversial, I, I don't regard these people as being evil. So Bill Gates, I think he's doing what he thinks is best. He thinks that's the best for us. I don't agree with him. Klaus Schwab, he thinks the same. So in a way, you know, they're also coming from their agendas. So Tony brings up a really beautiful point, um, team, is because, you know, um, we want to we want to be appreciated for our belief, what we believe, our values and what's important to us. And, you know, Tony had his daughter go and do something that he didn't believe what he would do for himself. And so, but he has to love and appreciate his daughter for her choices because um, going and studying overseas, maybe that's part of her mission and a purpose. And she's prepared to um, embrace the pain and the pleasure in the pursuit of something that is meaningful for her. So she's prepared to go and do that, which is which is great. She's made a decision and that's what she wants to do. And so it's interesting that when we say the word, you know, I'm not against, I'm against vaccinations. Well, maybe it's like, maybe it's a reframe of going, I'm against a vaccination for myself. You're free to do whatever you want to do, but I, I choose not to have a vax because we say, well, I'm anti-vax. What for everyone? You don't disagree a vaccination should be for everyone because then isn't that projecting your values onto someone else saying you should do or if you're pro-vax and you're like, no, everyone should get vaccinated, the same thing. You're then projecting your values onto someone else saying this is how you should live your life as opposed to going, you know what, I, this is what I choose. I choose I choose to get vaccinated. I choose not to get vaccinated, but it's my choice what I do with my body. You're free to do what you want to do and I'm going to love and appreciate you for what your, what your choices are because, uh, you know, you also want that to be done for you as well so definitely an interesting um so thank you tony for sharing your story um so yeah and but how are you going team is it interesting so it's learning learning a little bit okay great and i'm, I'm waiting for the i'm waiting for the 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 opposite side so i can i can i can debate the opposite side with your team so who's the individual in the group that's holding back going oh i, I feel like the whole the whole group is going to be like ah, up me are you this is a this is a showing that we are we have both sides of the of the of the equation and um I get. I, I just love to have the conversation with you as well. So if you are the brave one, feel free to also um, privately message me as well. All right. So Bart, I know you're not one of them. You're on the other side. <laughs> so I saw your. I saw mm. your comment before, but yeah, go for it. Um, in the beginning of the lockdown, I was really, really angry, especially with the fake news. Like every day, you know, oh, we got thousands of cases, but as uh, Ellen said, you know, they just test for some genetic material in your nose which gives a lot of false positives. But then I saw this video and this guy was talking about like, in 20 years from now, how do you want your story to be? Do you want to have a story like where you're disempowered, angry, protesting? So I kind of reframed the lockdown to lock down myself to go back within rather than blaming the news, being angry. Because I was an angry person, I was blaming everyone around me, you know, Australia, the governments. <laughs> uh, like, so I use it as an opportunity to take my power back. Um, and it has been the best year ever. I found my soulmate, I bought a house, I got three promotions. Um, I'm running for the marathon. So I tried to reframe it um, to get benefits out of it. Now, having said that, you know, to force people to have vaccinations just for a simple flu, I think it's absolutely ridiculous. And one of my highest values is traveling. And even if you choose to have the vaccine, you still have to do all these useless tests. Um, but then because travel is so high on my values, I decided last Sunday I had my first vaccine. Um, 
And I'm a bit worried about the long-term health effects. Like maybe they say like, oh, and now you need to keep getting shots, a third one, a fourth one. And maybe it's going to lead to like long-term health effects, as Christian said. Um, but I will see it then. If it happens, it happens. And I, I will deal with it when it happens. But yeah, I just want to be free again to travel, uh, to see the world. And yeah, so I know it's kind of I stupid. I feel no. I feel like you did all my work for me because <laughs> you you you, sh you showed. I mean, when you shared your story about making this lockdown time something that you remember in twenty years time, that gave me and what you've done with it. Like it's been health, it's been finances, it's been family, it's been it's been your work and your career. I know you're also building your coaching business as well. So it's like being a hugely transformational. So thank you for one doing the work and being able to use this as an opportunity to to um, grow from it and to still make the best use of what's actually happening. So it's super inspiring and, and goosebumps. And then I also feel like you've done my work for me because it's like, well, you showed me all the, the downsides for why you got it, but you know all the downsides. So you're aware of the downsides. So it's not like you got it and went, oh yeah, no problem. It's like, no, you're already aware of the downsides of what might happen if you know, down the track and down the future, which means that you're going in with it eyes wide open as opposed to blind going, oh, I'm just going to get it because I know that I have to get it because someone's telling me to get it. It's like, no, I'm choosing to do it because my values are being met and I want to go and I want to go and travel and I want to have that freedom again. So that's going to give me the freedom and I'm going to, and I'm going to go and do it knowing that there's going to, there may potentially be a cost to that. And I'm just tired of it all. So I just thought, just get it over with. I stopped watching the news. I just get it done and then just move forward with my life. Like I'm just tired of all this negativity on the news all day. Like even cases go down, they still say like, oh, but it can still go up. Like, oh. But like you know, you know though that Bart, that there's you can't have negativity without positivity. You know, you, we don't have one side of the equation. So you also have to look at, you know, what are some of the 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 blessings that have come out of of you know COVID and this whole experience and lockdown and you know and the length of time it's been going and going. Well, what's the what's the blessings that are coming out of it as well? And be able to like open your eyes up to be able to see that equally as well. Yeah. So, so I just you. hope I'm not going to turn into a zombie, but. <laughs> or like glow in the dark or something i don't know what happened <laughs> just, 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 all right so i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna call on someone so where is marina oh hey do you want to unmute marina is going to be our first other side so uh, tell, me, tell me tell me yeah tell me your thoughts what's been happening okay um, what have you decided yeah all right, so I'm pro-vax, but I'm pro-vax for me, okay? So whatever you guys decide to do with your own bodies, I don't care, like whatever. So I'll put that there. But what I can see is we're both focused on health. So I want to get the, the jab because I want to live um, like, like with Bart. I want to travel. I want to do stuff. And for me, freedom is, is travel. So for me, that is... Um, a big thing um, so for me I think having the jab will make me um, I wouldn't say healthier but like I that's what I choose to do um, whereas on the other side it's still about health so like we're, I just feel like we're fighting about similar issues on that respect yeah and and so, and, and curious, so before you got the jab or before you go to get the jab, so I don't know if you said that you had it or didn't have it. Oh, but um, I've got one, so I'm about to have the other one on Monday. Okay, cool. um, and uh, did, how much, like, did you do research on the, the side effects and what might happen and do all that? Or did you, did you go in and just go, oh, I'll just go and get it? No, no, I did, I did my research. Um, I didn't get into the whole, you know, world order or anything like that. I didn't go down that. I just focused on the health. Okay, yeah. what's, happening? what's good, what's bad, long COVID versus getting the jab, you know, what's what's happening? And um, and so based on that and based on what I could see, um, it was really interesting because when England was locked down, for anyone who doesn't know, I'm in Melbourne and we're this is now our sixth lockdown. We're back in lockdown again. And 
in England last year when everything was locked down, we were kind of going, yay, no one's dying, you know, we're going to be okay. And then what we're finding now is we're still locked down because we haven't done anything and now England's opening up. And so, like, and no disrespect to anyone, but I kind of, I hear the word freedom, freedom, freedom. But again, it depends on what side of the fence you are because freedom for me is the travel and going out and knowing that I'm not going to wind up in ICU or die straight away. Um, whereas the, yeah, so that, that's just my, my opinion. Okay. So, I, which is great. So, thank you for thank you for sharing, and thank you for sharing the other side and being our brave first first one. You know, you um, Marina brings up a really interesting. For those of you um, who are and, and other um, other countries, we in Australia we're an island. It's quite a big one, but still nonetheless an island. And um, you know, we kind of did um, somewhat escape the you know some of the challenge. We also have a less population as well, so that's also part of the dynamic. But we did somewhat. I'm having a bit of an easier ride, except for those in Melbourne, uh, through the kind of COVID dynamic. And there was a little bit of pride, you have, my, you know, as a, as a, like, you know, in terms of, you know, not, not being um, as affected as the rest of the world. We've got to put our hands up and say, yeah, we definitely kind of felt that. And now we're getting the, the other side or some of the states are getting the other side of that equation now and going, oh, here we are. And then we're now going to watch the, the other world opening up while we're still in lockdown. And so then there can be this whole like comparison of like, oh, they have a better life than I do right now. You know, and then we start to minimize our either country or we start to resent more people because we're in lockdown because we're comparing to what it would be like if we were just let free and go and do whatever we want. And so more of that kind of resentment builds up inside. So it's it's definitely Marina brings out a, a really beautiful point that, you know, that whole comparison that we have either to the past it means we're not appreciating our current now when we compare it to other countries and how we're not then appreciating our experience that we have now we're not taking like the bard approach which is going um that you know let's use this opportunity to kind of create and make and build something that's like magnificent and beautiful that we can then go and remember 2019 20 20 or 2021 20 21 22 how long it goes for you know as as like really like an inspiring time, like a life-changing, like a, 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 you know, a turning point that we had in our lives that completely changed and sh changed the shape of who we are, what we, what we are, what we believe in, what's really important to us. And, and remember it as something that we can share with our grandkids to go, you know what? Yes, it was a really tough time, but it was like the biggest stressful also came out the biggest, beautiful, most beautiful butterfly as well. So, Thank you, Marina. Daniel. Hey. Hey, Tanya. It's great to see you. Yeah, you too. Uh, I'm glad you reached out today. Thanks. Um, I suppose the, the point I, I sort of picked up from there, I'm a little bit more on the fence of um, the earlier speakers. And I think maybe the difference between Marina and say some of the earlier speakers and even myself to a degree I'm, I've done a bit of work over the last week to sort of take some of my um, charge over it is I think the difference with Marina's health and people who don't want to take the vax as health is um, no one's forcing Marina not to take the vaccine whereas you know the rest of us probably at some point yeah, you know, Bart wants to travel. Uh, I want to keep my gym open, and I'm pretty certain they're going to tell me at some point that if I don't have the vaccine, I won't be able to let people come in. So, um, I think it's more along the lines of uh, that. That is the struggle for a lot of us to sort of get our head around. Um, I just got my head around lockdowns and the benefits of lockdowns because I realised that if our governments didn't lock us down, there would be people who were still shit scared uh, and wouldn't come to my gym and the government wouldn't give me any funding. So now they've scared the shit out of everyone, uh, but they're paying me uh, 
because they scared everyone. So I'm going, well, you better pay me the money because you scared the shit out of everyone, so you better give me something. So I'll, I'll take that for now. If they didn't lock us down, people wouldn't come and I wouldn't get any funding. So I, I, I'm, I'm good with lockdowns for now. In fact, right. I'll stay in lockdown for two years if they keep giving me money. <laughs> they want to scare everyone, then lock me down for two years and keep giving me money. So is it possible um, then? Is it possible then, Daniel, that if you can find gratitude for lockdown, then you could also find gratitude for vaccinations as well, or for? Uh, yeah, and 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 I I feel that um I I feel that I just need time, mm. um and I need more data. Now I feel that at the end of the northern hemisphere's summer, because everyone talks about England being open and the US being open and Europe being open, but we don't know how their governments are going to act after this summer when infection rates go back up again. Are they still going to lock them down? Are they still going to do all the things that we're doing now? So for me, um, it's a case of waiting, see what the governments do, because if they continue to lock down their people, even though they're vaccinated, I'm just going to keep waiting before I get my vaccine because I don't want to be double shotted and still locked down. So um, Daniel brings up a really beautiful point that there is a lot of, so thank you, thank you for sharing, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty in the future. It's like, well, you know, um, you know, Iceland's like heavily vaccinated, but they're having, you know, more infections and, you know, that, that you know, this, this kind of like uncertainty, well, then if some, some countries, you know, like have, have had very different plans of how they're working through it, some are like not doing anything at all, some are like really pro-vax, some people aren't, you know, it's like, you know, varying degrees of, of how to deal with it. And that's because it's a, a complex issue that no one really knows about enough about yet. And we haven't had the, the, the years behind us of how to deal with something. It's not like, so it's kind of that dynamic. But when we, when the world is uncertain, we are focused on what the world is doing. And then we have to figure out, well, what is the world doing to know what I'm going to be doing? We then become outside driven for our inspiration, our purpose, and we kind of get, our purpose gets you know wobbled off course because you're like oh because I have to think about what everyone else is doing what, whether you know the the world is going to be open or not am I going to be able to travel and this kind of like uncertainty in the future because you're basing the outside world's experience on what is important to you so it's like well hang on like how much what happens if we kind of came back in and we focused on what's meaningful for us if we got reconnected with a really like I mean deeply inspired purpose mission like connecting your voids, what's most missing with your values, with your clear vision that you wanted to create. So you've got this, this beautiful um, like synthesis between your past, your present and your future. And you're clear on what that is. You're clear what's driving you. You're clear what's important to what you're um, heading towards. And that's regardless of what the outside world is doing. And if we got really connected with that, would we be so concerned whether the world is open or closed? Because we would just be adaptable to changing that, to be able to live our purpose of what's meaningful for us. So maybe, maybe that can be something that we can ponder on maybe at night when we sleep tonight or it's something we can think about in the coming days of going, well, hang on, because well, I know that the individuals that I've worked with in, in sessions and they are, they are clear on their purpose. They know what they're doing. They know what they're here for. They're following their spiritual purpose and path. They're like less distracted by what's going on. They're just, they're not listening to the news and they're not getting distracted by everyone else's emotions, but they're steady and, and purposeful in what they do. And so maybe that's a feedback mechanism. If you focus so much on the outside world, maybe it's a, a moment to go, hang on, hang on, because you get caught up in everyone else's emotion. And it's just like, you get super emotional and it's like, well, hang on, let's just come back to you again. What are you here for? What's your soul here for? And then um, have an, an opportunity to um, reconnect with, with you. And I wonder how much that would make a difference in your experience with, with um, the world. So something to ponder. All right. We have an anonymous. It's long. Can you bear with me? Is that, is that okay? It's, it's long. So... Um, this individual has a scientific background, so just pre-framing. Um, and um, so, so, um, so just talking about this in terms of um, 
uh, vaccine research and worked in COVID in a COVID world. So has like some level, well, not some a degree of experience. So totally understand the emotions because of the information presented in, um, has been awful, overwhelming, extremely confusing and only creating fear. Um, is it experimental? How, um, that's how it started. However, grateful to the genius scientists who made it possible to make it so quickly. Um, we've, we are told to wear seat belts or have certain vaccines if we're traveling in certain countries. Um, and we are okay with it. And I don't think it's about vaccines by the way it's presented in their chaotic, forced, uninspired way. They are not framed or explained with the right communication from the start that in a pandemic, the laws change for health of the whole. Maybe we, out, um, we ourselves can see the opportunities and reframing the situation, channel our energy towards our own recalibration um, as a couple um, have already expressed. There can be other um, side effects with any drug jab. Um, how is this different? So it's a fascinating conversation. So definitely in terms of being able to see the, the other side of what's, you know, um, I know that some people go, well, seatbelts and vaccinations aren't the same. And there's, you know, there's, there's clearly a difference, but I, I, I understand the point. And so um, I do wonder, you know, one of the things that I've questioned is, you know, how do we understand, because I know there's a few doctors in the room, I know that we've got, you know, someone who's also in the, that kind of world. Um, it's like, how do we expect um, a lot of lay people to understand something that's actually quite complex that even some people who've studied for a really long time are still trying to wrap their own head around. And it's like, we don't have any, some, you know, degree of understanding and we're trying to understand the, the, the information. So it can be, it can be really, truly overwhelming. Um, so it goes back to the point where we talked about with Alan, looking at both sides of the equation and both sides of the, um, the, like the content to make sure that even if you are researching that you get both sides of the both sides of the equation so um thank you anonymous for sharing okay we have time for maybe one or two more so john you have your you don't have your video on and that's okay so but you have your hand up so if you still would like to no nah, all right how are you i'm well thank you how are you not too bad not too bad Okay, yeah, tell me. Yeah, I've, I've been sort of like uh, struggling with it as well too, you know, with everything that we've kind of learned and, you know, even reading a few things that John said, even, uh, you know, the vaccine, vaccines don't really work that well. Um, why is it forced upon us? And um, why, and we are probably angry at probably the um, governments enforcing it to, to make us do something we really don't want to do and, uh, you know, it, it probably humanity got to where it got to without vaccines. So why are we, you know, it's just being just pushed down our throats. Mm. You know, you bring up, um, you know, because forced is something that I hear a lot. You know, if we, if, if forced is that same um, emotional charge that comes up a lot and whatever, well, people agree that that's one of the things that's, that, that's uh, yeah, heightened charge. Let me, let me share a story. So I worked with someone recently and, um, they that was one of the very first things they said it's just this forced 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 and it's like okay so we don't see the world as it is we see the world as you are so that's one kind of dynamic and also if we're really emotionally charged with something it, it's not the first time forced has happened like let's let's like human behavior is repeated it's not the first time so let's just go and find the problem behind the problem let's go back deeper and find out where did this originate of this you know perception that an authority someone bigger than you is forcing you and when when I when they said and I said well you know tell me where that where did that start where did that begin and then he is like okay I thought I had dealt with this but Tanya maybe I haven't and they had had um, some forced sexual experience when they were when they were an early teen with another older boy and said, oh, I feel like I, I feel like I've resolved it, but maybe there's something in this that I'm not seeing because I'm, I'm, you know, I'm supercharged. And so I was like, okay, let's, let's go, let's go and, and explore that. 
And so we looked at some of the the blessings that had happened from his experience. How did that serve him? What did he learn? You know, even to the point of going, okay, so from that moment onwards, who have you equally been forcing to do things that they haven't wanted to do with their own body? And they're like, like, you know, the, the reflection in that for them was like huge because often what we condemn we either breed in our children because then they end up doing the same thing. We end up attracting it in the next individual because they'll end up showing for the forced, forced, force, which is why in some like say intimate relationships, you find yourself in that same intimate dynamic again, like, uh, you know, of, of, of having a challenge and it gets shown again, or you become the same individual, you do the same traits, actions or inactions to in order to love them and also love yourself. And so sometimes we can end up becoming that individual, the forcing onto someone else of the charge that we had um, back in the past. And so when they were able to really appreciate and go deep on really healing this dynamic that they had since they were young and, and, and truly appreciate, like not just appreciating it on the surface level, but having heart open tears of gratitude and seeing and appreciating that experience for, for that it changed his it changed his whole perspective of the force dynamic in the outer world. He I said, asked at the end, so how do you feel about you know like vaccinations now? I was like, oh, I'm not, even, I'm not even worried about that. And so that dynamic actually got resolved. That outer world dynamic got resolved because he resolved something from the, his inner world. Now I'm not saying that um, every individual here has the force and has to be sexual. It, that doesn't, that's not how it works. But if you don't see the world as it is, you see the world as you are. You also see because your own emotional charges. So what I would encourage you to do is if you perceive force, you have to start to reflect and go, where is this originated from in my life? What is it? Is it like, because your parents forced you to do stuff you didn't want to do? Is it because you, you, you were forced into, you know, going to a different country when you didn't want to live there? Were you forced into, you know, what you perceive maybe into a marriage that you don't want to get married into? Like what, what, what do you perceive to be forced um, onto you? And maybe it's worth going and clearing that dynamic and seeing the, the ripple effect of, of shifting that in the, the world dynamic now. So something to consider. Yeah. I also want to bring up one more point. That I don't know if you know this. Well, well you might know this because I don't know how, how much you know. But in universal principles, there's a polarity. So we have a positive and negative charge, which is intertangled and intertwined together. So you can't have positive without negative, negative without positive. They're, they're entangled in the, in the mind. They're entangled in communities. They're entangled in the world. And so what happens is the more extreme we become on one side, what do you think that's doing to the other side? Making it more inflamed and extreme on the inverse. So the more we become like anti you know, vaccination, it's my body, I'm doing what we want. We have to also appreciate that in a global dynamic, there's also the inverse, same number of people going, don't care about my body, do whatever you want, jabby, jabby, jabby. And so you have the people who have the polar opposite entangled. So the best and the way to make change and transformation is coming from a balanced perspective and then choosing to 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 walk your path from that perspective as opposed to being polarized and then wanting things to change so i'm going to encourage you um, to to know that there's power in shifting your inner world for your outer world to transform you know as you as you transform you, the world around you transforms as well. So if the world is changing and you perceive there's lots of, you know, challenges in the world, you have to go, well, how is that a reflection of what's really truly going on for me? You know, how purposeful and how much on path am I am right now? And then maybe, maybe looking at um, dissolving that dynamic, because if you're about health, and you have to think about what's that impact, not just on my own physical health, but the health of my relationship. Because maybe you're with an, you know, a partner who's the opposite of you, or maybe parts of your family are, are the opposites of you because they're playing in that opposite pole dynamic within your family. And then you know the, the health of your family is being challenged. And so it's like, okay, so what would happen if you, because I know that 
profound things can happen that as you transform you, the world around you transforms. So you will watch your family as you soften in your own emotional charges, either pro or against, the other people around you will also shift and change as well. And so it doesn't then have to be the forefront of conversation anymore. You can get back on track of going, hang on, what's truly important to me? What would I love to be doing with my life and get connected with your soul's mission instead of being distracted by all this noise and everything else that's going on in the outer world? So. Thank you very much. Oh, you're, you're welcome. You're, you're, you're welcome. So, so team, I want to give you an opportunity. So we have... I, we have a program coming up on Saturday the 21st. For those in the US, it's a little early for you, but it will be recorded. So it is um, five hours of going through and applying the Demartini method on your emotional charge that you have around the, the changes and the challenges so that you can actually have an opportunity to fully just clear it now. Let's just clear it and um, come together, have some really beautiful heart open completions on your, your emotional charges and see a resolution for it so that you can get back um, on track again. So if you are interested in coming along to the workshop, let me put it in the chat section for you. You can just click on the link. It is um, 4 p.m. till 9 p.m. Sydney time. If you are in London or thereabouts, it is 7 a.m. till 12 p.m. on the 21st. So Saturday, not this week, but next week. And it is um, 399 Australian dollars. And we have a special for tonight. So if you, we have it for 48 hours. So you don't have to think about it tonight. You can, th you, you don't have to buy it tonight if you want to have some time to think about it. But if you do, it is $100 off. So it makes it $2.99. It does mean that if you have someone else in your household who also would like to come along, it is one ticket per household, not one ticket per individual. So if you want someone else to come along and you want your hubby or your spouse or your mom to come along to the program as well, because you feel like that would also help them, then please um, feel free to also invite them along for the class as well. So um, it's in there if you use the code MGM100. So it's MGM100 is the code and that will give you your discount for the next 48 hours. Now, I know that some people, maybe you're considering finances and you think, oh, I don't know about finances. You know, you have to also think what is this actually costing you in terms of emotionally holding you back and not able to produce income or get clear on what it is that you want to do because of the distraction. So think about that. And the other is, intuitively tonight maybe think about it go because I want you to come because you genuinely you're ready you feel like yeah I'm actually ready I feel like this is resonant I really want to come if you go okay and you're thinking about it you can ask you know what's the benefit of of you know actually dissolving and fully resolving this now and 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 changing it so you can have that Bart moment of going you know I'm really grateful for this this experience and you can look back and reflect on how um how magnificent it is so consider asking what's the benefit of applying the work and clearing the emotional charge and then decide if you want to come along if you know someone else who would also like to come along and join in feel free to also share the link with them they do not have to have done the demartini method applied the demartini method in any way beforehand so it's it's open to anyone so you are um i can offer it in um so daniel i see yours i can do that for you so uh feel free to click on the link and to um, sign up now there is just a little bit of pre-work before you come along to the class and that is selecting an individual to work on and then also selecting a specific trait action or inaction so i'm going to ask you to do your very best at at applying the column eight and column one question to the individual uh, or maybe even organization. We're gonna be a bit creative if you, if you um, want to do like um, one of the organizations, you can do that as well. We're, we're going to be creative with this. And so um, you wanna come prepared because we wanna get straight into doing the work. You know, part of the reason why we wanted to put this event on first is because we wanted you to voice out what it is that you're really charged with because it would be really hard to come and do the work if there's still emotional stuff. So hopefully this has been enough to kind of um, start you on a journey of being able to perceive this experience from a different perspective. 
So um, if you'd love to come along and feel like it's resonant for you, um, come and join us. It is going to be, I know that when we come with, you know, having done like 75 breakthroughs uh, experiences with Dr. Martini, what I noticed is the people who came with the heaviest, most challenging charges had the most profound, deepest shifts that just changed the course of their life. And so I know that if you're the individual that's sitting there with like a lot of heaviness around this, then come, because I know that I'm, I'll be dedicated to you helping you have a transformation and as other people open their heart you get to go on the coattails of their heart opening as well and so that's going to help you to also shift as well so hopefully i will see you there if not i will see you at the next perfect time so thank you team for coming along so before we wrap up i would love to hear from you what's been your greatest insight learning lesson realization from tonight's session so if you want to um, put it in the chat section you can just um, type it in your greatest insight your greatest learning your greatest realization for today your take home so uh christina said changing myself is changing the world yeah definitely has a ripple effect. I know that those who have done the Martini method before know that, you know, you know, I've seen, you know, people touch and hug each other after 10 years of not even going near each other. You know, I've, I've, I've seen a Jewish man who traditional Jewish man who wouldn't go and touch another, you know, another, you know, a woman in public hugged her at the end because no boundary, no border was just, you know, no, no, you know, you know, perception could change the the experience he had that he just wanted to give her a hug and say thank you, um, even if it weren't going against his spiritual beliefs. So it's definitely powerful. Mal has said focusing on our inspired mission and understanding our voids has been your take home. Bart has said research both sides. So um, and Christian said thank you so much for giving this space. Amazing. All right. Thank you, team. And I look forward to seeing you at the next perfect time. See you guys. So just to let you know, just before you go off and you don't want to go off, we every class that we ever do with Maximum Growth, we do after chats. So this doesn't have to be on the same topic. So we can, we normally do about another 15 minutes. If you want to hang around and you feel like hanging around, um, I know Alex has got his hand up, so I'm not sure if he still wants to ask a question or make a statement, but we do do a little extra after chat. So we can talk about the same thing, what we've been talking about. If you have a, another topic you want to bring up or ask a question, we're also, we can go anywhere. So Alex, I know you have a question. So I just want to say thank statement. you for, um, for a really concise and synthesized perspective on this evolving situation. I think your points about um, the importance of connecting with your telos and your your mission are, are really vital because um, you know nothing that is um, nothing that is like nothing of the sense is going to satisfy the soul whether that's positive or negative um, and we know with um, you know some of the things of what's been happening with some of the statements that have been happening through mainstream media for example we know that that there has been exaggerations and minimizations which are also known as lies but you know the, they serve a purpose as well because if we um if we try and give the, the general public more than black and white it's too much to to take in and to comprehend so the message needs to be simple um the other reflection that I had just kind of um, listening to the conversation was the importance of like not just looking at things from a binary perspective like anti or pro for example in quantum physics is also the concept of of quadrate which is like looking at four four perspectives simultaneously so it's like it's this and that or it's this or that or it's neither or um and that, and that creates kind of like a, a four-dimensional matrix. So I think the conversation has been up until now very much kind of it's like which, which camp you're in, are you pro or you're anti-vax? There's definitely benefits and drawbacks to both. Mm. Um, my sense is that we will start to see a little bit more emerge in like another option, which actually complements uh, the, the process of vaccination. Um, my, just to give a little bit of background, I'm, I'm not a medical doctor. My professional training is as a doctor of chiropractic. So um, I have had an interest in the research and 
uh, kept up to date with with the evolving research as it's come to pass. But um, yeah, my my sense is there's, for example, there's some early treatment and also prophylactic options that have actually come out and 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 been very well researched. Um, for well, example, if, to, if anyone wants to look up Tess Laurie's work, um, she made a submission to British Parliament. Um, she is pretty much as credentialed as they come. Um, medical doctor, PhD, um, advisor to government on public health policy. What else? Um, uh, yeah. Um, uh, actively involved on the committees with the WHO. Um, when I heard that she'd taken her summer vacation to work on a, a meta-analysis, which is the highest standard of evidence um, for a, a drug that that is already approved, it's been it's had 3.6 billion doses administered over the last 50 years, um, which showed to decrease death rates by 49%. And also prophylactically decreased transmission by 87%, which is like so significant when you think of what that could do to the R number. Um, it, it kind of really got me thinking of, well, what's the actual application of that? And if we did that in conjunction with the strategies that Australia is already combining, like, you know, how, how much of a, an impact could that make for helping us to see, um, helping us to see change with um you know improving these lockdown situations and for example like my brother's getting married in a couple of months and his best mate is interstate and you know those little things are always nice for best mates to be able to be together so um you know but that that concept that you talked about as well with force versus uh like i think there is a difference between um, kind of feeling outside pressure and then also being empowered. So I think a big part of my journey in um, this, this realm uh, over the last 18 months of doing the, doing the research has really been to be able to be empowered um, to both in, empowered in terms of my own personal rights, but then also empowered to, to have an objective viewpoint on all of the sides. So there's no real attack. I don't really have an attachment one way or another. And I can hear it. Um, I can hear but, it in your voice. Like I can, I can, oh, you go, but there's a button. I hear. Let me tell yeah. me. <laughs> um, I don't really have, I don't really have a, an attachment one way or another, but I guess at the end of the day, it, it comes down to if there is a but, it comes down to, you know, what's going to best serve humanity? Um, not just what's going to serve humanity now, but what's going to best serve humanity, um, you know, in, in the generations to come because mm. we, we all have uh, we all have kids you know we, well we don't all have kids i don't have kids yet um but you know there's we've we're not just thinking about ourselves we're also thinking about you know our future and i think it is also nice when we're um when we're making decisions to be able to expand those time horizons mm. and, and i i haven't made a decision one way or another um, but I think it's nice just to be able to kind of sit in the potential of understanding the landscape and and feeling empowered to make a decision, take action, yeah, um, in whatever way is is going to serve you know, your your perception of what's the highest good or in the direction that you love to. Mm. And it's, I mean, that, that's one of the challenges leaders face, isn't it? Like they they have, you know, often you know, leaders have to make decisions where they've got a lot more data and a lot more information, making decisions based upon a lot of things. And mm. people, um, be, you know, below aren't really um, aware of some of the complexities of why they're making that particular decision. They just see the end result of the decision. And so, yep. yes, there is a, an element of going, well, yeah, what's going to help humanity and what's going to help, you know, the, 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 um, the society as well. And, um, uh, but no matter what decision a leader makes, no matter what, you'll have people who are for and against it and varying degrees of for and against it. So then to think that you're going to make a decision where everyone's going to agree is like a, a misperception in itself. And it's like how much willing, you know, part of what we're doing in maximum growth this 
this um, this month is actually owning our villain and, and owning our ability to be a leader at the top and go, are you prepared to be criticized and challenged and people not like you and, you know, dish you for it? And are you prepared to still stand for what you believe in, even if half of the world is against you? And so or might feel like half the world because it might be just like a few so like people who have very, very high charges and therefore quantitatively it's half the world. Um, and so then it's, you know, this kind of like interesting, interesting dynamic, which is why coming back to your purpose is so important because when you follow that, you're willing to go and do the things that are really challenging in the, in the face of what you perceive is your message and you want to want to um, share with the world. So um, thank you, Alex, for sharing. Yeah. I just, I just want to say, um, I hope, Alex, in your vision of what's nice for humanity in the long run also includes liberty and freedom for people to choose um, rather than just what's good for the herd. And also that complex facts are given to people, not just a few black and white things because they're too simple to understand. Uh, but yeah, I'm highly charged. Um, okay, you, I, I can, yeah, we can. And I really can, thank you for this. And I, I <laughs> because no one's doing these kind of workshops that you're doing. They're not touching, this is a hornet's nest. So I really respect and admire you for allowing people like me to come along and express opinions which are charged. That doesn't make them right or wrong, but you know, thank you. And I'm, I'll be coming to this workshop. I hope you do a few of them actually. <laughs> <laughs> one might not be enough. Is that yeah. I, I know we can go deep with one. And yeah, let's see. That's um, so I just wanted to say thank you for um, thank you for holding this space tonight. And thank you also for, for sharing your love and your wisdom. You're most welcome. Thank you. So um, does anyone else have any questions, comments, concerns? Marina, I saw you put your hand up. Yeah, I just wanted to um to because I've been hearing everything, which has been fantastic, and I've, I've learned actually a few things that I didn't know and, and everything like that. One, um, I, I'm, I do marketing and everything like that, and um, I know in the 1920s, I think it was the 1920s, I've got to get my facts right, the 1920s or something, where we had the fire, so they'd light the fires all down the street, and then they brought electricity in. And at the time, which I didn't realise, but at the time people were protesting about the electricity. You know, we should not have this electricity. The, the fires are working just fine. We should leave it like that. And they weren't, they weren't protesting about what was happening now because they could see that it was working now. What they were concerned about is that in 70, 100 years time, that the elect electricity will evolve to something that we can't see anymore. And the, the thing that I find really interesting is that they were absolutely correct because the electricity has turned into the internet. We cannot see the internet anymore. But for us that are living now, can you imagine us not having the internet like it, it's unfathomable. We, we cannot like, um, we're just so ingrained, we're so used to the internet now that it's just formed a part of our lives. So the way I, look, the way I see it is, regardless of whether you take the COVID vaccine or not, we will be fine in the end. And in a hundred years time, they'll look at this and they'll go, wow, what, what a, thing that's happened but look at all this good that's come out um so you got like you might be right i might be right who the god who knows but regardless of what happens our future generation isn't going to well hopefully won't have this argument because they'll just be used to it yeah and they'll just move forward so does that make sense yeah and I, i'm i'm um... I feel like it's really important, particularly with our language, when we describe things, that there isn't a right or wrong way. You know, when we put morality on the experience that we have, we then judge people and then people become better and worse. And so that's just what does what feels most congruent for you. And what feels congruent today may not necessarily be what feels congruent in a week's time or a month's time or a year's time. And so because the the you know the things are changing and you change and we we all change. And so it's also I, I hope I didn't come out as if 
I'm right, you're wrong. It's not nothing about that. I'm just. Oh, I'm just sorry. using your. I'm just in, using it as a learning. It's um, you 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 did perfect, <laughs> Marina, and um, I'm just using it as a learning experience to say, well, well this would be something to 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 pick up on. So yes, but I, I understand what you're what you're sharing. So, and Tanya, may I just quickly ask Ma Ma Marina a question? Yes. Tanya, may I ask you a question? <laughs> so, with I think some some of us understand that the the goal in in regards to the Great Reset is to also introduce like the uh, social credit system as the people have in China, which pretty much means. Um, yeah, if you're a good girl, you know, you have access to your money and you have access to internet and this and that. And if you don't, then because everything is centralized and controlled, you don't. Do, do, you, do you really think we will adapt to that? Yes, I do, because the Chinese have. Hmm. They've adapted to it. For them, I have Chinese students. For them, it's, it's part of their life. It's no big deal. It's like they don't see it as a good, bad thing. It's just that's the way their life is so it, I guess it's different um Alan because you, you've known something beforehand so you've got something to compare it to but I grew up in East Germany I know how it is to live in a country where you're not allowed to you know have <laughs> to, um no, no, I'm lost. I know, we could, we'll, we'll end up going down. A, a, um, yes, yeah. you have it's it's a, um, it's not here yeah, to like prove it. Does. Yeah, no, because you're saying that there's there's the experience, and I'm just wondering, you know, of course you can get used to everything, but how happy are you with that? But yeah, no, but you also have your comp your comparison of when you were younger of the charge there, and you're like, and then you know what it feels like to have freedom, and then part of you what you perceive as freedom anyway, because you've always got um, freedom and constraint. Even when you're in Germany, there was freedom constraint just in different ways. Oh, and, yeah. so, and so, and the same thing's going to happen. So Marina's like saying essentially that there's going to be good and bad. So any 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 way that the world works out, it's going to be good and bad. And so it becomes then how adaptable you just become to the changing environment. I remember when I, um, I went to, I went and trekked with the gorillas in Rwanda in 2011 and was flying back through. Uh, so I went Rwanda to um, Nigeria from Nigeria down to South Africa. And um, in the, in the journey, I didn't realize that I needed a yellow, a yellow, fever vaccination card um, or get vaccinated to get back into South Africa. And I was like, what? And so this is like at the airport. And so I'm like, oh, well, I'm not getting vaccinated. Um, but I did did just recently get vaccinated for chickenpox, just so that I'd let you know um, that I, I was like, no, I'm not getting vaccinated. So it's like, I'm, I'm not putting, you're not putting anything that I don't know what you're doing into my body. And so I'm like, I was like adamant I was not getting it. And I was adamant I was getting on the flight. So I was like, what have I got to do? She's like, a hundred bucks. I'm like, hundred US and it's done. And she's like, yeah, okay, here's a hundred US. Write me a card. Gave me a little like band-aid to stick on my, my, my arms. So just in case that asked and I got a hundred US and I, I was off, off we went. So it was like, here we go. So it's like, um, not saying that that's what you have to do. But it's like, how adaptable can we be if something, if, because I know that if I don't want to do something, I will be resourceful enough to kind of find avenues to go and do it. Or I also know not to worry about something that hasn't yet happened, because sometimes we can get so fearful about something, you know, it's like, um, you know, a test that was going to happen or the, the teacher's going to ask you a question and you're like, oh my God, I'm so fearful. And, so, and then nothing happens. And you're like, why have I been so stressed about something that never happened? Like, like. Like in year 2000, maybe some of you wouldn't remember, but you know, the, like the year 2000 when they thought that the computers would just like stop. I know it's not the same, but it's kind of like there was a lot of stress leading up to that and then nothing happened. And it's like, okay, so is that maybe a lesson that you notice in your life where how much we get stressed about something and it's like that, you know, because this isn't the first time that something said that's going to happen, but never happened, you know, well, maybe it doesn't happen and you get stressed about it. Then maybe that's a, a repeating behavior that happens in life that you get stressed about things um, and anxious about things that might not, that don't end up happening. And so it's like, oh, um, if that's the case, then it's go, well, hang on, let's let's like take it regroup and go hang on like maybe I should worry about things when they are happening as opposed to when they're going to because there's a myriad of things that could potentially happen and we don't know so how much time will be focused on potential what we perceive to be negative in the future 
and how much concern are we focused on that as opposed to coming back again to what's truly meaningful for us now. Something to ponder. Patrick, who Thanks, is fading Tan. into the dark uh, hey. as we speak. Just a quick one. Obviously, I feel like I trust John in that he's far more intelligent when it comes to sort of science and medicine than I. Um, his preference, if he had a choice, would have not been take the vaccine. Is that correct? Look, I don't know his preference. You'd yeah, have right. to ask him. Okay. Yeah, yep. right. Yep. Cool. I just thought you might have had the chance or insight. I haven't. About it. Um, no. I, ha I haven't. Okay. I haven't had much contact with him of late, so yeah, right. I I don't know. Cool. Yeah. But I'm sure he'd be really open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really. Like if you did have a conversation, oh, for sure, for sure. I'm sure he would. He would tell you how he felt and what his decision making process was behind me and behind doing it. Yeah. I missed um, the first ten minutes. What's your preference? Have you shared that? Oh no, I haven't. Would you like to know? Yeah. Um. So I'm I'm not vaccinated. My my parents are vaccinated. So um, fully vaccinated. My um, my parenting partner is vaccinated. Who I live with, um, uh, he's fully vaccinated. Um, I'm not. I'm like on the fence at the moment. So I haven't decided whether I would or wouldn't. I also haven't done enough research to really truly make a decision on it or not. Um, so I know that I'm like, I'm already fully vaccinated as it, cause I got vaccinated as a child. So I, I'm, I'm not sure. So I know that every indecision is a decision. So my decision essentially mm -hmm. is saying I'm not doing it, um, because every indecision is a decision. Um, I'm just, I just know that when, if I do decide to do it, it's a choice. I really want to be clear about making because I choose to do it, not because I feel like it would give me an outcome of, you know, because I'm being told it would give me an opportunity to travel or because, you know, it's, 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 you know, what my family is doing and I feel the pressure of having to do because everyone else is doing, I, I genuinely want to sit down and I haven't, I haven't felt like right now, um, is it, I've like, I'm super focused on my business and, you know, creating some amazing content and building that out at the moment, that um, it's a distraction for me to go focus and research on, on, you know, which vaccine and what the side effects are and all of that kind of stuff. Like, I just don't feel like that's what I want to invest my time in. I'm currently doing a Demartini method on Gladys, um, who is our premier of New South Wales, because I've got a, um, I've got a couple of charges around her. So I'm doing her. Um, I would rather clear some emotional stuff around it and then make a decision about what I'd love to do. But I also don't feel like I've got a time pressure that I need to make a decision today or now. I'm like, I'm actually okay. A little bit like Daniel is like, I kind of really feel like I'm loving lockdown at the moment. Um, um, and it's really kind of a little bit also like Bart going, like it's just, I'm like, kind of in this little bubble of my, you know, my little family here. And I'm just using this as every opportunity. I'm waking up at four o'clock in the morning. I'm staying up until really late at night. I'm just putting everything I can, every ounce of like my inspiration into, into creating maximum growth to be like a content rich place for people to learn and grow about and shift and dissolve their emotional charges. And so I feel like that is my focus right now. I don't, I'm not, I'm like in my lane with that. And awesome. so at the moment, I'm not. Um, I'm not making a decision. But I'm not. I'm not anti-vax. I'm not pro-vax. I'm kind of. I don't. Um, I've just. Yeah. I've got to make a. I haven't decision. decided yet. Yeah, yeah, I haven't decided yet. I mean, I decided recently just to get the. Um, I decided recently to get the chickenpox vaccination. Part of that was because my. Or um, I have. There's five. I have five. There's five of us in our family. Kind of. It's an interesting family. Different mums, dads. Um, but there's five of us. Um, sisters and brothers. And so I'm the only one of them to not have had the chicken pox. They all had them as adults, not as children. And they range between being in their early 20s to 30s to having them. And they said it was horrific. They like, so they said that they had like, you know, everywhere, like everywhere you can imagine and more everywhere, like go everywhere team, yeah. everywhere. Yeah. And so I'm like, and they, I just remember how, has anyone had it as an adult? Um, it's just like incredibly painful, they said. And I was like, you know what? I am, I am, Bridget said I had them when I was 14. It was horrible. Yeah, or horrific. I, I am, I'm so focused on what I want to do. I just thought, oh, jab me. Just, I, I'd just, I'd rather do a little jab here. And then I, I, I won't, you know, 
it won't kind of take me because if that's like two weeks off off work, I I, I don't want to have two weeks off work. I want to I want to stay focused. Um, and there's you know a possibility because I now have a daughter. And so it's like, you know, and I'm around children that aren't vaccinated as well. So I'm like, okay, now this is, I'm going to make a choice because it feels congruent. It genuinely felt congruent for me. And so I, that was my, that was my choice. Um, so yeah, just, um, I'm in the middle. No, yeah, so there you go. Um, I do have, though, hardwired in me, if you come to me and you're like pro something, I have it hardwired to show you the other side. And then if you come with me, you know, uh, anti something, I'll show you the other side. And so what I do notice is um, the people who are pro vaccinations aren't so emotionally charged. So I don't really have to show them a lot of the other side. It's kind of a little conversation. But some people who are like anti have such a heightened charge. I have to work harder to, to show them the other side. So it may come across looking like sometimes, oh, I think she's anti, but I'm not. I'm 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 balanced middle path. And so I'm just balancing the other individual who whoever I'm I'm speaking to at the time. Um, Bernie. Oh, yeah, good. Hi. Hey. Yeah, I just wanted to say that I had my second shot today. I've got a sore arm. <laughs> um, I haven't had any side effects, but um, I was like you, Tanya. I was on the fence about it, um, did a fair bit of research. But when it came down to it, it came down to my values. My yeah. highest value is family. Um, my, I'm from a large family <clears throat> I have eight siblings and one of them lives in America and I've, all of his family over there have had COVID and they've had their shots except for my brother who's very anti he's, um, the, he's the polar opposite so he's very charged <laughs> <laughs> and um so we've had some inter interesting conversations. But, yeah, when it came down to it, my daughter's in Sydney, haven't seen her for a long time. And it just, if it means I get to see my family, that's so important. I definitely feel like I almost so, cry. <laughs> like, yeah, I, yeah. I, I remember, I remember a, a, a facilitator um, that um, they had their mum in a nursing home and she was like dying. And he said, I don't want to get a, I don't want to get a flu vaccine because that's what they've said I need to get in order for, to go and see her. I don't want to do it. But you know what? I'm prepared to do it because I want to be there before she dies. I want to be there when she has her last breath. And so he was prepared to do that for his body because his his mom and his connection with his mom was so important. And it's like you have to, you know, if you come back to the, because I really truly be like, um, you know, Bonnie's vaccinated. Um, she goes to childcare. She's vaccinated, and I, I truly went. Okay, I, I don't agree. Like I'm, I'm, I, I'm, you know, I'm a bit more like anti, but I don't want to like. I'm not really, but I'm like a bit more anti. I'm like, if I was swinging a little bit, it would be a little bit, but not a lot. And I was like, I didn't want her to be vaccinated, but my 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 partner is more pro. He he calls it pro. Um, um, he calls it um, anti disease. Or whatever he calls it. Anyway, so we and I also work, so put her into um, childcare, got it vaccinated, and I thought, okay, so if 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 her mental state and my mental state might also play a role in her getting vaccinated, and all this stuff might come out, I was like, okay, what do I've got to do to make sure that I've cleared any emotion I have around vaccinations? What happens when I go into the state and there we are that I just give her love and I'm in a state, you know, a state of balance and equilibration. I have my heart open. I'm grateful for this experience. I wonder how much that's going to affect her physiology and my physiology and the experience that she has. You know, when she got her first vaccination, I was late. Um, so she was about seven, eight, eight, eight months, nine months or something when she got her first vaccination. And so when she, when she got it, she cried for like, like record least amount of time. She like cried and then she was finished. And so it was like super interesting to watch that. And even the nurse was like, is that it? Like, is that it? And so it was super interesting to watch her physiology change because I was also just like really um, like in a, like I was 
playing with the with the experience so I know that part of our like physiology as we balance things out it does have a you know it does have an effect on our on our body as well when we balance our mind down and then when we come with some a reason why we do something because it's so purposeful and meaningful um, which I had to do lots of linking and how to serve and having conversations with my partner tell me why tell me why you find this is like something that's like a, a, a you know an experience you you, you want her to have and so he had to kind of sell it to me. And I was like, okay, well, I, I'm starting to kind of appreciate the other side. And so because of that, I feel like that made, like there was a meaning behind getting it. It wasn't just doing it for the sake of doing it. And also, um, you know, making sure that you're physiologically in a state of gratitude to do when doing it will make a difference. So whether you agree, like I'm, 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 I'm only sharing how I feel in my experience not to, it's just my experience. You don't have to agree. You can disagree and you say, I can't believe she got a child vaccinated and blah, blah, blah. You can have, to, it's okay to have a different opinion. And so I'm just, you know, the same with, I respect your choice and what you decide to do. And I know that you would also do the same for others. So is there anyone that's been super quiet, but just going, gosh, I wish I said something but hasn't yet. Okay, let's do one more thing before we wrap up. Christian asked us a question. Oh, Sandra. Yeah. <gasps> I was just thinking about how I feel about the situation at the moment, going in and out of meetings at work and friends and family, because you've got people on both sides of the spectrum. And I was thinking about the movie, My, My Big Fat Greek Wedding. I don't know if you guys have seen it. And the lady walks in and she says, you're not married, Santa Maria. And she makes a sign of the cross like she's evil. It's a little bit like the vaccination. You're not vaccinated, Santa Maria. It's like where? It's like it's an evil, something evil. Just thinking about that. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. One of my close friends, she's in Sweden and, um, and has some chronic health issues as well and had it for, you know, 15 years. And um, she didn't want to get the vaccination, but no one would hug her. No one would touch her because she had like she she hadn't had the vaccination and so and Sweden has a different um you know they have a different kind of um like society I guess or different you know um uh, perceptions around health and so they they she was like I actually had to go and get it because she felt like that would actually meet and be the thing that would actually can like she wouldn't get the Hail Mary like thing, thing to it. she would actually feel like she could um be part of the community and that in itself is being is healing in itself you know, like to feel like you're part of a community. But yes, no, not so great if you feel like you're subordinating to the community. But if you genuinely feel like you can hug your your parents again and your family again, then that can be that can be healing in the body in itself. So yeah, you bring up a, an interesting point. So thank you. Um I'll be safe. Tanya, you, you don't need to ask that question on my behalf anymore. I, I just worry that it could be divisive. So if you're interested. Okay, well, um, we, we don't, I'm, I'm sure um, we, we can leave it. Yeah, I just, um, so I'd love to, if you had your, I hope that you can, you can take away from this session that, um, you know, the, the, yes, people share their opinion. I hope you take away the, the gold nuggets of wisdom the, between each, you know, sh share. And it's like, oh, what could I learn from that? Like about the polarities in every group dynamic, like um, Bernie was just sharing that one brother against all the other siblings, you know, he's the antiparticle in the family. And it's like, let's appreciate him for who he is. And he, he's as different. He's actually balancing out the extremes of the other parts of the other people in the family or being able to appreciate that, we don't see the world as it is. We see the world as we as you are, or being able to appreciate that you know there isn't a right way or wrong way, and sometimes you're fucked squared either way. So it's like we may as well do, make a decision that feels most congruent for you and do what feels right, you know, aligned with you. Oh, I just saw there's a child in the room, and so. <laughs> Cover, cover his ears. <laughs> um, and so, you know, do what's really, really congruent with you because people are going to challenge you anyway. So you may as well be true with what feels right or congruent for you. And therefore, if someone challenges you, you can go, you know what, I'm okay with my decision. So I don't have to change or prove it to you why I did it or whatever, but it's when you do a decision and you don't feel confident in that decision or certain in that decision, and then someone challenges you, that's when you fall apart and, 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 and you know, challenge. 
the other the other take home that I would love you to take is when you have certainty in something, you don't have to prove to anyone the reason why you do it. You just have to say, I did it or I didn't do it because waste no words on those who do not seek. So thank you, team. Hope you got lots of uh, benefit and uh, insights from that session. And I look forward to seeing you hopefully next Saturday or if not at the next perfect time. See you guys.